So let's take a look at what happens when we do time scaling of a Dirac delta function. So first of all, just recall what the Dirac delta function is. It is this infinitely thin function that has infinite height. So when we plot it, we always draw this vertical arrow. And in the case of a unit delta function, we put a one right there. That doesn't mean that the height of this function is one. What we really mean is that the density of this function is one. If we were to integrate across the delta function, delta t, we would actually get out one. So if you go back to kind of the definition of a delta function, recall we kind of keep the area one and we let the width get smaller and smaller and smaller. So as the width is getting smaller, the height has to get taller. But the entire time we maintain a height of one. So that's really one of the defining characteristics of this delta function. What we're going to do in this video, though, is look at what happens when we perform time scaling of the delta function. So if a is a real valued number larger than zero, what do we mean when we write down delta of a t? What does it mean or how do we plot a signal like this where the time variable has been replaced by a t? In other words, time scaling has occurred. Here's what I claim. I claim that we're going to show that delta of a t is actually equal to 1 over a delta of t. So that's kind of the claim right now. We're going to go through just some pretty simple math to show that that is indeed the case. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's write down the integral of delta a t. So there it is right there. And then to perform this integration, I don't know how to perform this integration. What I do know is that if I was integrating across delta of t, I would get 1. So let's do a change of variable here in our integral. Let's introduce the variable tau. If we set tau equal to a t, then d tau is a dt. So if we do this variable substitution in our integral, we can rewrite the integral in terms of the tau variable like this. So initially when t was minus infinity, tau is now minus infinity because when you plug in t equals negative infinity in this equation, you still get minus infinity. Same thing for the top limit. When t was infinity, tau is infinity. And then we replaced a t with tau right there. And then similarly, I need to replace dt. If you solve this equation for dt, you have dt equals d tau over a, which is what I wrote down right there exactly. All right, just a little bit of factoring now. A, 1 over a is just a constant. I can bring it outside of the integral, so that's what I've done right here. And then look what I'm left with. I'm left with 1 over a, the integral over all tau of delta of tau. Based on the property of the Dirac delta function, we know that this has an area of 1. So when we're done performing this integral, we actually get 1 over a times 1. So that gives us some insight now into how we should actually plot the signal delta of a t. Since delta of a t is just 1 over a delta of t, we're going to plot it in a very similar way. It's still going to be this vertical bar, but the density of this function isn't 1, so we don't write a 1 next to it. The density of this function is 1 over a, so we've written a 1 over a right there. Just as an example, um, we'll put some numbers on this. What if a was 0.1? Well, delta of 0.1t would then be equal to 1 over 0.1, which is 10. We would have 10 delta of t. And in some ways that makes sense. This scaling right here is really slowing down time by a factor of 10. So as I integra integrate across the delta function, I'm getting a lot more area add up. In fact, I get 10 times more area add up. Or what about this one? Delta of 5t. Well, based on what we just proved, this is 1 -fifth delta of t. And again, that kind of makes sense. 5t means as time is going up, it is going up at a rate five times as fast, which means I integrate across the impulse much faster. I don't get as much density integrated out, so I only have one-fifth delta of t. What we've done so far is just for a greater than zero. You could go through the exact same math for a less than zero, and you would come out with a very similar result. And if you combine the result that we've proved here with this other approach for a being less than zero, which we won't do, it's very straightforward, what you can conclude is actually a more general equation, and that is the following. For any real valued a, delta of a t is 1 over the absolute value of delta of t. So we'll put a box around that. It's a very useful equation that is good for any value a. It's a nice identity that we can use at times when we need it. So that's one good thing about this video that we've accomplished. The other is just how to visualize time-scaled delta functions. Thanks for watching, everyone.